Welcome, I'm Dana Schlegenhaft and thanks for joining us on Downtown Now. The 30 minute show you're about to watch is part of a storytelling project by the nonprofit Downtown Bentonville Inc. We love to share stories about exceptional people, experiences and businesses in our community. And we have a packed show for you today. A local father and his son turned a fractured relationship into an unbreakable bond through running on local trails. And we'll go on an adventure with Brooke Beerhouse from downtown Bentonville out to Devil's Den. Heather Shelton will take you to the newest and brightest spot downtown for everything healthy. Plus, Visit Bentonville marks 25 years of sharing the story of Bentonville. We'll sit down with Visit Bentonville president and CEO Kayleen Griffith. But first, WWE champion and actor John Cena was in Northwest Arkansas to continue his support for FitOps a Bentonville nonprofit that helps veterans find new purpose in civilian life through fitness. Four years ago, Army veteran Matt Hesse became a disruptor. In 2017, I had sold a business I had built. Um, and in that business, I had employed a lot of veterans. And what I saw from the veterans that I had hired is a lot of them didn't struggle with the skills needed to be successful as a civilian, um, but more of the, uh, the way they felt about themselves and the conflict that they felt inside. Hesse observed fellow veterans struggling to transition back to civilian life after active duty and was aware of staggering suicide rates among those who have served. He founded the nonprofit FitOps, an organization that provides tools, support, and training for veterans to become elite fitness trainers. In November 2021, the group broke ground on the University of Health and Performance in Northwest Arkansas a 500-acre campus allowing them to reach and train at a larger scale. And beyond training, it provides a place to educate, connect, heal, and find renewed purpose. Fitness is the universal language of every soldier. Um, whether you're uh, in, in any branch, you're, uh, the, under, the underpinning um, of everything that we do is done by fitness. Mentally, emotionally, and spiritually is something that's sort of new to the military and maybe new to community and the awareness of what that means and the effect that physicality can have on emotional mental health. WWE champion and movie star John Cena noticed the impact Fit Ops had on veterans and stepped in to support the nonprofit financially and through advocacy. I think it's a very difficult thing to look at a set of circumstances that our veterans are going through. And uh, Matt and his team at FitOps have found a way at least to take a step in the right direction to, to fix that problem. And after seeing it and being a part of it, to me that was, that was an epiphany. It, uh, I've, I've seen the energy of it. And Cena says that energy has changed lives. Yeah, I've seen people come here and think they're worthless. And by that I mean, uh, you know, wake up with the contemplative idea that uh, the universe would, would go on better without them. And that's a, that's a difficult concept for me to comprehend. What this place does is it encourages people that feel worthless that they have worth. And it reminds them uh, what they may have learned on their journey in the military, but also informs them that there is life beyond the uniform. Both Hesse and Cena have a message to any veteran struggling to find a new path after serving our country. Ask yourself what it is you're struggling with. And if you really distill down into um, the why behind who you are, when you took the uniform off, you took the purpose off that you carried by wearing it. Your ability to serve doesn't have to be in a military uniform. You can still serve in a lot of different ways. And ask for help, I think that's a, a really brave trait that a lot of people shy away from because they think it makes you look weak. It's asking for help is one of the strongest things you can ever do. Create the community that you might be familiar with. If you were attached to the camaraderie and the fraternity of the U.S. Armed Forces and you lack that, begin to build that infrastructure. If you feel you need to talk to somebody, Talk to somebody, a friend or a professional that can offer you a helping hand. And um, man, I, I really hope and, and wish they researched the FitOps Foundation because I know what it, can, what it can do for people and I think they'll have a great experience here. Fitness can heal, it can also unite. Meet John Leachman and his 20-year-old son Cameron who has severe autism. 
You may notice them as a constant fixture on Saturday mornings right here in downtown Bentonville. Neither rain, sleet, snow or extreme heat will stop the duo from their weekly run. When John Leachman's son Cameron was diagnosed with severe autism at the age of three, all focus shifted to navigating the road ahead. It created this kind of chasm between Cameron and I uh, in terms of a traditional father-son relationship. I was way more in problem-solve mode than I was relationship mode dad at that time. But one of Cameron's teachers in the Bentonville school system noticed a budding talent in Cameron and relayed his observations during a parent-teacher meeting. Sean made a, a mention that day of a drill that he did in PE that Cameron just really loved to do. It was like this gee whiz moment of, you know, you know, never even thought, you know, in my wildest imagination that he would enjoy running with me. That moment and an observation from a teacher changed everything. The two started running through Bentonville each day a bit further, one mile at a time, a ritual beyond fitness. Running became the catalyst for an unbreakable bond as father and son. The best thing I ever heard was see the able, not the label. And that is really the what it's kind of put my mind towards is just continually finding the bar and redefining, you know, his ceiling, right? It, it creates this, like, this drive to say, we don't know how high high is. We don't know where the ceiling is, so, you know, don't stop trying. Their relationship is detailed in a book written by John, aptly titled One Mile at a Time, The Journey Towards an Unbreakable Bond with My Autistic Son. What is One Mile at a Time? It's a, it's a deep look into our journey together and uh, learning how to kind of come to grips with autism and, and become a dynamic duo here. We're best friends now, uh, wouldn't trade it for the world. The book aims at paving a path for other families to navigate the challenges and triumphs of autism. And if I can keep one family together because there's some ray of hope that later on down the line, I can teach my kid to fish or I can run with my son or I can you know, do something that, that we enjoy doing together and have a relationship, it's worth it and that's what I would say is don't don't stop looking don't stop trying and or, or at least start and then don't stop uh, and that's what I was unwilling to do for so long was just try to be curious about what he was able to do coming up after the break Brooke beer house will take us on an Ozark adventure and Heather Shelton will take us to a downtown spot certain to brighten your day Make the Scott Family Amazium in Bentonville your destination for fun, fun, fun. With over 50,000 square feet of interactive exhibits and ample space outdoors for free range play, the Amazium is your place to create amazing experiences for the entire family. It's a hit with families and children of all ages. Plan your visit at Amazium.org. I love taking featured locals out of downtown and into the wilderness. Since downtown Bentonville is only a short drive to the Ozarks, my guest, Jess Somerset, agreed to join me on a sunrise hike at Devil's Den. Jess balances her creative endeavors and community work with her corporate career. We share a coffee, a sunrise, and more of her story. Take a look. It is 5.30 a.m. and I am just about to leave downtown Bentonville so that I can go meet my featured local today, Jess Somerset, for a hike out in Devil's Den State Park. We are going to get out there um, early, get some amazing views, and have our coffee. So I'm about to buckle up and head out to Devil's Den State Park. I'll see y'all there. Jess, good morning. Good morning. All right, are you ready for this hike? I am, let's do it. 
We just got to the scenic overlook and we are making our French press today. Yes. I brought a coffee from Columbia, single origin for you. Okay. I know you are a coffee girl. Yes. When I moved here, um, I was actually starting a new job and it was like my little piece of happiness <laughs> was going to a coffee shop. Yeah. And I really just liked meeting the baristas, meeting the people, like the regulars that came in there. And it was just a nice like bit of happiness in the morning before starting my day. You are a local creative. You are a photographer, a yoga instructor, and you do all of that while having your nine to five. Can you tell me a little bit about that journey? Yeah. Sort of like, sure. so yeah. Photography was something that I did when I lived in Chicago. I started with my phone and just taking pictures of things that I enjoyed right. and like the city and capturing different architecture. Um, and then when I moved to Arkansas, I started hiking a lot more to just take kind of the same approach of just capturing the beauty of what is, yeah. um, people were like, do you take pictures? And so I said, yeah, I take pictures and started doing portraits for people. Wow. Um, and then with yoga, it was something that kind of fell into my lap with all the other things that I was doing. I was working out a lot. Um, and then I unfortunately got hurt and couldn't work out the same way that I was working out. And yeah. so then I started practicing more regularly to kind of just rehab myself. Um, and then fast forward a couple years later, I decided to get a involved in teacher training. I was like, this is really good for me. I know it can be good for other people. And I kind of funneled myself into the community yoga route and I wanted to make sure that that didn't go away. More recently, um, since I've practiced yoga, we've done a couple of hiking yoga events out here on the Yellow Rock Overlook, so. All right, Jessa, what did you think of the hike this morning? I thought it was really cool. I love that we got a little bit of like the fog coming in and then we got to see the sun like come through the clouds, which is really awesome too. I am so energized from that hike today with Jess. I am driving straight to Crystal Bridges to take a look at one of my favorite pieces in the gallery. It reminds me of our view from today and I thought it'd be fun to share with y'all. An adventure like that needs a healthy start. Hey, and I got to hang out at one of the coolest spots in downtown Sunny's on 2nd. The people are awesome, the decor is awesome, and the food is amazing. Check this out. What's up, friends? It's your girl, Heather, and I'm hanging out at Sunny's on 2nd with my girl, Tara Loop, wellness curator. Curator, <laughs> you see that? Like how it rolled Whoa. off the tongue. Curator. Yes. <laughs> yes, how are you, friends? I'm great, how are you? Oh, I'm so happy, and I'm so yeah. happy about the spread that you got just for me. Just for you. Look at all these colors. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, tell me a little bit about what we got going on here. So, Sunny's is health food forward. We focus on real whole ingredients. So, that means everything that comes from nature with no additives, preservatives, nothing processed. Oh. So, we have beautiful salads like the vegan Caesar that you're about to try. Soba noodles, our gluten-free veggie burrito, which is a fan favorite. What? And then, of course, our classic sunny smoothies. What made you want to put a place like this in Bentonville? Well, you know, Arkansas is the natural state. Come on, Everything natural grows. state. <laughs> so this is food in its natural state. Yeah. We wanted to help showcase what you can do with everything that's grown here in yeah. nature, work with local farmers to create really beautiful and delicious food. Yeah. Girl, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't come down here just for this salad, what is happening in my mouth? I know. Next up, what do we have? Soba noodles. Soba noodles. Soba noodles with, uh, what's in there? Some peppers, some radicchio, some green onion. Now listen, they already won me with the first thing. Yeah? All right. <laughs> You're the best. Smoothie time. <laughs> I'm gonna try this bright yellow yes. to match my shirt. Wanna see just what we got popping here, okay? Now tell me a little bit about the smoothie. So the smoothie is made with beets, which are really good vegetable to have during the fall. Okay. It helps, uh, root vegetables help you feel really grounded and calm and centered and they're just loaded with good green nutrients. So now I'm not only coming here eating all y'all's food, but I'm learning something about beet vegetables. I did not know that. They're also nature's candy. They're naturally sweet. 
I personally love these. I love them in smoothies. I love them roasted on mm. salads. Mm. Did y'all try this smoothie? Y'all better get on this smoothie. Don't leave without it. It's got beets in it. Nature's candy. This is what we need. This is fantastic. Sunny's on 2nd is open Thursday and Friday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays and Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 3. And don't forget to check out their super cool micro market stocked with healthy beverages and snacks along with their beautiful sunroom where you can relax and chill and buy cool merch and gifts all made locally. I love everything. If you could tell people one reason to come to Sunny's, what would it be? If you don't feel like cooking at home, but you just want a really fun, delicious, and nutritious meal for you and your family, this is this is your spot. You heard it and here, folks. And it's always sunny at Sunny's. It's, it's like, always sunny. The, the it's green. beautiful. <laughs> They've got all this. I mean, it really is pretty, guys. You don't want to miss it. Sunny's on second. You have got to come back, and you got to get Heather's noodles. Yes. These, on the menu now. On the menu now. <laughs> The food was amazing. Hey guys, you can find the new Sunny's on 2nd at 110 Northwest 2nd Street. Downtown Bentonville has changed drastically in the last 25 years. And Kayleen Griffith has shared the story of that growth throughout the world. Downtown Dana sits down with the president and CEO of Visit Bentonville next. Small businesses make downtown Bentonville unique, vibrant, full of life, creativity, and energy. On November 27th, support the downtown Bentonville businesses owned by your neighbors, friends, and members of our community on Small Business Saturday. It's easy to make a difference. Pick your local spot for a coffee, a meal, do holiday shopping, sign up for a class, or treat yourself to something new. Join the movement to shop small. In 1996, the Bentonville City uh, Council created the Advertising and Promotions Commission and the infrastructure um, that uh, Visit Bentonville has put in place since that time has been amazing for the city. Visit Bentonville's work has been a large part of Bentonville being known as the mountain biking capital of the world. But some of the other areas that Bentonville is also great at that Visit Bentonville helps promote and, and attract tourism in are things like the arts and even one that I don't see other CVBs ever embracing but the focus on aviation and aviation tourism and aviation training and opportunities with backcountry flying and, and everything of the like. That's amazing and innovative and really an example of how Visit Bentonville sees the future and sees where this town's going and, and leads the way. Working together with Visit Bentonville we've been able to create ads and inserts that go into publications like the New York Times or Wall Street Journal where we're able to talk about the latest offerings at Crystal Bridges or the Momentary, and then follow it up with specific messages about reasons for people to come enjoy all that Bentonville has to offer. Projects like ball fields, projects like swimming pools, um, the, these things that they've helped us build and provide for our citizens, um, 
you know, another another element that they worked really close with us on are pieces of public art, just like what's behind me right now. These are things that we've worked together that serves our citizens, but also enhances the quality of our city to attract visitors from, um, from all over the world. A focus on partnerships and collaboration serve as a driving force for Visit Bentonville's efforts to promote and sell Bentonville as a world-class tourism destination. And a lot has changed over the years in this growing downtown. Not long ago, we sat down with President and CEO of Visit Bentonville, Kayleen Griffith, to discuss Visit Bentonville's 25th anniversary and the dynamic changes she's seen throughout our region. <laughs> but we're going to talk a little bit about Bentonville and Visit Bentonville and your work here. Um, you were hired in 2005. Yes, ma'am. And when you got here, there were 20,000 people in Bentonville. And that had to have been quite a task to step into that role and sell it as this tourism destination that it is today. Talk a little bit about that as you stepped into that role. Well, first and foremost, in 2005, we were really a business destination. We weren't that leisure destination. I started in August of 2005. May of 2005 was when Crystal Bridges made their announcement of building here. So I got the opportunity to be at the beginning of that experience of kind of recreating this leisure destination uh, with some wonderful people like those partners of Crystal Bridges. And then we continued just to grow from there. And so it was really exciting to be part of that. I say, I always tell people that I got on the bus at the right time mm -hmm. uh, to make that transition uh, from that business destination to the leisure, uh, to the addition of the leisure, leisure destination. A lot of people would look at Bentonville and say there was a very distinct moment where we made that shift into a tourism destination. And a lot of that probably has to do with the announcement of Crystal Bridges. Yeah. That became a catalyst for what's to come. Speak a little bit about that announcement and then where you went from there. Sure. I think the wonderful thing about uh, that announcement was it was in 2005. And I think when we started seeing things change, that our downtown started evolving. It spawned growth and economic development in our downtown from restaurants coming in in the 2007, 2008, uh, mountain bike, uh, you know, fat tire opened up. Those kind of things happened prior to Crystal Bridges opening up or, you know, opening or even breaking ground in a sense. So I think that it, just that announcement spawned an excitement and understanding what was coming for the future. You know, the nice thing is Crystal Bridges anticipated, you know, two to 300 people coming annually. And that first year we had over 500, you know, million. So it was, or five, half, I'm sorry, half a million. And so it was kind of exciting for that, that you, we just saw that transition of people wanting to watch what was going on. I'm along with, you know, 2007 was our first five miles of our mountain bike trails. Um, and then, you know, 2009 was that, nine and 10 was that next, uh, you know, 10 to 15 miles that was coming in. Our Razorback Greenway opened up. So there's a lot of things that happened from 2005 to 2011 prior to Crystal Bridges opening up, creating this destination for people from outside the area, which also we benefit as locals. Sure. There was the art the local art in, yes. in, within the community in Crystal Bridges and then later on the momentary. Yes. And then as you spoke to um, the trail system and we've gone from you know establishing the first few miles of trails to the mountain biking capital of the world was yes. this, which is something that Visit Bentonville was very instrumental in kind of laying that well, planting that flag. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I think um, we started going out and people wanted us to talk about five miles of trails and most places people don't travel for five miles. They wanna travel for 10 plus miles. So we knew when they made that second announcement of that you know, 10 to 15 miles coming into our area, we wanted to tell that story. So we started going out, started bringing in influencers, started bringing in, telling the story a little bit different than we were telling initially. So it was really kind of exciting for us um, to go out and talk about it um, as, a, as a destination, but also partnering with our local residents and our local businesses. And I think what we are different than most cycling cities is our whole city has adopted that cycling culture. And so it's not just about Visit Bentonville, it's about an identity that we're created as a community. And it's really interesting because if you're not a mountain biker, you try the e-bike. If you don't try the e-bike, maybe you're the parent that has the kid on the trailer. So, it, And I imagine we'll have some cyclists oh, going sure. by as we're talking here. <laughs> yeah. So it has become ingrained in the culture. Yes. Yeah. Something um, maybe I didn't know a few years ago was how Visit Bentonville 
is funded and oh, how sure. it works. Yeah. And I want to explain that to people watching because it is different than Downtown Benton Link, which is a nonprofit in the Chamber of Commerce. So explain how it's funded and, and how you get that money coming in. Sure. Well, uh, the nice thing is that uh, we have 2% uh, on lodging, 2% mm -hmm. uh, tax on lodging, so we get that, and then a 1% on our restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really a great opportunity for us to tell our story to the rest of the world, and we really focus on uh, catering to the 50 miles and out. People that are going to come in and stay the night or come in, it's new dollars. So we want to bring in new dollars to the community that are great assets for our restaurants, our lodging, for our hotels, uh, for um, our attractions. It's all new dollars for retail. We want to continue to bring in those dollars and invite, invite people from outside the community. So as Visit Bentonville tells that story and yeah. is more successful and more successful, you bring in more money, here comes my hair. You bring in more money. And another thing people don't realize is that that money is, a lot of it's reinvested in yes. the community in places like Lawrence, Lawrence Plaza, Plaza yes. right behind us. So speak about those investments. I want people to understand that Visit Bentonville benefits you know, the tourism, but also the people here living here day yeah. to day. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that our, I feel like our leadership prior to me coming, our city council and some of the leaders in our community really realized that dollars that we're bringing in from a tourism aspect, we need to reinvest in things that will impact tourism, but also give be an asset and kind of um, an experience for our locals. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about creating those opportunities. Uh, in our state law and in the city ordinance, we, it has to impact tourism. But we feel like things like Lawrence Plaza, it creates as a secondary destination for people that are coming for Crystal Bridges or to see our art, they still can do a nighttime um, experience here at uh, there. Uh, we we replace the turf at, um, or I guess it wasn't turf, but we didn't replace it. We made, we put turf down in partnership with the Parks and Rec Department. Um, we were, we provided the soccer boards or the scoreboards for the, um, all the ball fields in the city because we knew that if we wanted to bring in tournaments, um, that we, they needed to have quality type experiences when they came in. Uh, we did a partnership with them at the community center with um, the eight lane pool. That was one of the things they were not going to put in. And we were like, hey, we can bring in swim meets um, throughout the year with an indoor facility. So we tried to figure out how do we partner with our city and our city council and our parks and rec to create experiences that allow us to bring in visitors, but also asset for our community and something that our residents can experience and enjoy. So it's really important to us as we do those kind of projects. Um, we want to make sure that they're um, um, you know, positive things that are going to impact the community. You can watch our full interview with Kayleen at downtownbentonville.org. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Downtown Now. We'll be back on KNWA on Saturday, December 5th at 8.30 a.m. with our exclusive interview with Stuart Walton. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.